In this presentation, I will discuss the electrical shading effects in, of interro shadings. Most of the discussion won't be new to you. However, we were interested in putting things into a broader perspective, and especially into the perspective of modeling. As you may know well, shadings will cause electrical mismatch between submodules, modules, and strings. The amount largely depends on the layout and connections of your system. But overall, you should always expect some extra loss from this electrical mismatch. I will highlight the most prominent cases, always in the context of regular inter-row shadings. Optimizers are components that may allow to mitigate these effects. I will therefore summarize how they work. Then, I will present our study and explain our conclusions in terms of expected losses under modeling. One of the main findings is that for inter-row shadings, due to their regularity, most types of optimizers, including string optimizers, can be effective in mitigating mismatch losses. Let us begin with the simplest case, the effect of shadings on a single module. The first observation is that whether one shades one cell or several cells within the same submodule, the resulting IV curve will look roughly the same. Here, a submodule is defined as a collection of cells in series protected by a bypass diode. This behavior is characteristic of components in series, as any current limitation will affect all components. Most of the modeling philosophy in PVSYST is therefore based on defining the fundamental unit of shading as a submodule rather than the single cell. When the submodules forming the module are put together, you obtain the total IV curve in black. Here we have shaded one submodule among the three. There are two operating regimes shown in blue and green, either in blue at a current limited by the shaded cells or in green at a lower voltage because the bypass diode is activated. In the second regime, the power from the diffuse irradiance shining on the shaded submodules is lost. This roughly corresponds to the dashed area. This is a first type of mismatch loss. Once we connect multiple modules together into strings and inverter circuits, other types of mismatch can arise. If the shadings are inhomogeneous among modules of the same string, there will be a certain mismatch between modules. The behavior is, however, basically the same as with submodules. After all, you still only have components in series. Mismatch between strings is different and can also become important. There may be a certain voltage mismatch between MPPs. In this example, a shaded string is in parallel with an unshaded string. The respective maximum power points are different voltages due to some bypass diodes being activated. The total maximum power point is situated at the level of the lower voltage, but in doing so, the total maximum is not the sum of the maxima. Here one will suffer both from the submodule mismatch, i.e. loss of part of the diffuse production, and from the mismatch between the strings. These two contributions can be seen in the plot on the right. This last situation can be generalized. In this plot, we study the shading losses normalized to the production of a single string as a function of the number of submodules being shaded. The inter-row shading situation corresponds to different points on the x-axis. In regular shadings on standard modules, one always shades one-third of all the submodules at a time. Hence the importance of the one-third line and the two-third line. A situation without mismatch corresponds to the black line. The orange line, where only one row of module is connected to an MPPT, shows a few extra losses due to the submodule mismatch. The mismatch between strings will increase with the number of strings in parallel. You can see from two strings onwards, one of which is shaded, one quickly reaches a plateau in the losses. Remembering this plot will be useful for what follows. Let us now make a brief detour on optimizers. Optimizers can usually alleviate the mismatch between components. They are power electronic components that are connected with subsets of inverter circuits. 
They allow the extension of the maximum power point of components to a range of voltage and currents. Effectively, they may boost the current or, vo or voltage of the operating point while keeping its power at the price of a small reduction of overall efficiency. In the plot, you can see that the effect of an optimizer on the PV curve of a module. The MPP is extended to a flat maximum power range. There are several types of optimizers. String optimizers that operate at the level of one or several full strings. Module optimizers, which extend the MP range of modules. They are then connected in series to form a string. We differentiate in PVCs the terms buck only, which boost the current only, and full optimizers with both current and voltage boost. Finally, submodule optimizers, which are integrated in the module design. Natively, there will be three optimizers in parallel per module. They lessen the necessity of using bypass diodes. It is easy to understand how optimizers improve the production in the context of shadings. By extending the MPP to maximum power ranges, it would be easier to find an operating point that fits all maximum powers of the individual components. In our earlier example of two strings in parallel, one shaded and one unshaded, one can see that using module optimizers, there is now a range of voltages that allows for the maximum power to be the sum of both individual maximum powers. You could reach the same results with string optimizers and slightly better with some module optimizers. With this theory in mind, I will now present our study. The idea is to put the electrical shading effects into a broader perspective by comparing different configurations and choices of optimizers. Our goal is actually twofold. We want to understand the behavior under inter-row shadings of different system configurations. And we also want to model this configuration PVCist using the two models of shadings, the detailed model used as a reference because it is based on IV curves, and the simplified model, which should be used for large and regular PV systems. We actually already presented the first version of this study at PVSEC 2021. But at the time, we didn't include the effects of the optimizers. In practice, we prepared different system configurations within PVCist and simulated them. We only considered fixed tilt rows, but the results can be extended to rows of trackers. We are interested in various parameters. First, the number of rows of modules on each table. Second, the orientation of the modules and the type of module cell layout. By this I mean half-cut cells or standard layout. Third, whether the string spreads over multiple rows, which is also called U-shaped connections. And fourth, different types of optimizers. On the left is a table of abbreviations for reference, where you can see the different cases under study. As mentioned, we simulate in two ways. The reference is the so-called module layout, which is the more detailed model based on IV curves of submodules. We also simulate with a faster and simplified model based on rectangular partitions on the tables. The simplified model is designed to work on regular arrangement of tables or trackers. The main assumptions are that the shading conditions are regular, so that all the modules in a row of modules are shaded at the same time, and that there are two or more rows of standard, so non half cut cell modules on each table, and only one of them is regularly shaded. In this situation, the mismatch between the strings will cancel the contribution of the shaded string, as long as at least one cell within that string is shaded. This can be represented in the plot shown on the right. The x-axis describes the fraction of the total string height that is being shaded. The y-axis is the shading loss factor equal to 1 when the production is 0. You can see that after one cell is covered, the shading loss factor is at its maximum. While this model was designed to be applied string by string, it can be extended to become more applicable in more general situations. The generalization is simple. 
Instead of considering a string, one may consider a subdivision of a string and apply the same model. We call that subdivision a partition. For example, in the case of a string of half-cut modules, one may apply the model over the lower half of the string and then over the upper half. Thanks to this, we will see that the model is applicable to the other cases and cases different than the one de uh, described above, just by adapting the partitioning. At EU PVSEC 2021, we have presented the following results. In these plots, we show the yearly electrical shading factor for different configurations, shown as different bars. This electrical shading factor is a measure of the mismatch caused by the inter-row shadings throughout a year. All the cases have been modeled with a GCR of 0.65 and a tilt of 20 degrees for a site in southern France. In yellow, you see the results with the detailed module layout reference model, which serves here as our best model. You can see that some of these configurations are more effective than others at mitigating the shading losses. This corresponds to the lower bars in the diagram. With the blue and green dots, we also show the results using the simplified model. On the right, we present the number of partitions in the height of the table that we let the simplified model match best the reference for each case. Now I will summarize the results of the study, including the optimizers. I focus on the cases 1L and 2L, shown in red and blue hues, respectively because they are the most common. Let's first look at the plot on the left, which depicts situations where the shadings cover up to one third of the first row of modules. You see here that all types of optimizers succeed in mit mitigating or even canceling the string to string mismatch. Indeed, they all lower the shading factor on beam to the one L level or below, which by definition has no string to string mismatch since there is only one string per MPPT. You can also observe that the sub-module optimizers are better than the case 1L without optimizers. This is because the sub-module optimizers will also mitigate the mismatch between sub-modules on a given module, allowing you to recover the power from the diffuse component. Within the cases under study, the module optimizers do not work better than the string optimizers. The module optimizers will however perform better under irregular shading conditions, which we didn't study, or when dealing with inhomogeneous aging, for instance. Finally, once the shadings and therefore the mismatch become important, for example, when two submodules are shaded, the optimizer may start to show their limits. You can see this for cases 2LSMO and 2LSO. This is because there is a limit to the current and boost and voltage boost that the optimizers can provide. And the optimizers used in this study hit that limit. In these cases, the mitigation is not as effective. Here we show that the simplified model can be replicated most situations quite systematically. The four plots selected cover the most common cases, i.e. 1L, 2L, 2LU, which means a string on two rows, and 1T. In the same situation as for the PVSEC results, i.e. 0.65 GCR and 20 degrees tilt, with an adapted choice of partitioning, one can replicate the detailed model quite well. The partitioning used to do so is summarized in the table on the right. To conclude, optimizers are effective at reducing the mismatch due to shadings. Depending on the system layout, some optimizer choices are more effective than others. Typically, whenever the shadings are regular, all types of optimizers can reduce the mismatch between strings. Submodule optimizers can even go a bit further and help recover the power from some diffuse irradiants. Nota bene, when designing a real system, it is important to consider cost and efficiency reduction, as well as extra limitations of the components. In this study, we just focused on the shadings in our study, but ultimately factors like the inverter and optimizer limits are quite important to take into consideration. Finally, we have shown that in PVSYST, most situations can be modeled with a simplified model as well, unlocking the ability of simulating large regular systems in less time.